viewers and welcome to the third of our uh, programmes coming from New Orleans District Council. My name's Hilary Halliday and over the last uh, couple of weeks I've been chatting to councillors from New Orleans City and from The Fuse and today I'm delighted to be welcome to welcome to the studio our Mourns councillors. Good morning gentlemen, you're very welcome. Good morning. Good morning. I'd just like you to introduce yourselves please. Uh, Councillor Brian Quinn from The Mourns and the Deputy Mayor of New Orleans Moore. Councillor Harold McKee from The Mourns. Well, you're all very welcome and thank you for coming uh, into the studio. And I'm sure the Mourns must be looking magnificent at this time of the year and we've had a great summer. Uh, plenty of tourists in the Mourns? Well, yes, there has been quite a few tourists to the Mourns and all part of what the community in Mourn is doing because uh, Mourn has quite a few festivals and a family fun days to attract tourists and they're all taking good advantage of them. Yeah, you had a, a fish fest there at the end of August. Um, am I right? A, a fantastic day, yeah, I believe. Yeah, a successful day, yes. A good turnout. The weather just wasn't, maybe was not just better times. Well, August wasn't great, was it? So. No, but I suppose today is the day of the announcement I made where it's the driest since 1910. That's so, right. So uh, we've had a, a good, a good uh, as regards tourism, we I see additional uh, bus tours into the town have great. stayed for a week or a couple of weeks there, visiting and staying in the local hotels and, and obviously doing their shopping locally and visiting the Kilkeel Harbour and that's all good for business. Yes, and uh, the KDA down there do a great job, don't they, uh, with the with their tourism promotion? Yes, and this year, they, because of the anniversary of the Second World War and things like that going on, mm -hmm. they made great contacts with a festival called GI Jive right. because of the American troops who had been based uh, in the Cranfield Greencastle area of Kilkeel during the preparations to the D-Day uh -huh. So it was a fantastic event. We had the Consul General of the United States of America up as part and several of the World War II veterans. So it was very exciting and the children thoroughly enjoyed it. They had a lot of the uh, war vehicles and all their guns and things. So it was it was fun and entertainment for all the family. Well, apart from uh, the tourism aspect, it's very important to promote and support the fishing industry as well down there, isn't it, Harold? Yes, very important. Yes, I'd be in a way associated with Kilkeel fishing industry. I used to work around the harbour. Uh, I knew a lot of fishermen around the harbour. Uh, it is an attraction. Uh, there is plans in the pipeline for an extension to the, the outer harbours as known as, and in turn of that, hopefully larger vessels will come in Good. and uh, put their catch on, on the dock side and creating more processing of, of the same fish and obviously a greater turnover of money coming into Kilkeel. For the economy, yeah. exactly. Yeah. It's very important that. Yeah. I know the fishing fleet has been depleted over the last number of years, but do you think it's, it's coming together again? It's, it's on the it's rise? Yes, yeah, it's, it's holding its own. Yeah, it is, Good. surely. Yeah, yes. yeah. Fishing was something that was always up and down, but you take it when the, when the take time the strike, the you, you make your best of it, yeah. Yes. yeah. But I think it's, it's not just the fishing industry, it's all the other businesses around the harbour, mm -hmm. engineering works, painters, boat builders, who are now also branching out into more pleasure craft and things like that. So there is a, a, several other entire industries around the harbour, which are all looking very positively towards the future. Good, good. Uh, and how do you think the council can support, you know, the people in Kilkeel? Is there... Well, the council and ourselves as councillors are working very closely with the different groupings, uh, helping them to identify alternative sources of funding mm -hmm. uh, with help from the council teams. Yeah. So we're looking very positively Good. towards the future. Well, I know there's a number of projects, new projects coming on board that the council, uh, the council are trying to get on board. For instance, uh, the Mourn Signature Project at Cranfield. I know that we have done an awful lot uh, with the Mourn Coastal Route. We've done little projects along the way. And I believe there's a project in the pipeline uh, for the upgrading of uh, Cranfield Beach. I think we're going to be spending something like £20,000 in that, along with funding that we're getting from the flag project. Uh, do you think these improvements will uh, attract more visitors to Cranfield because it is a blue flag beach? Yes, a lot, a lot of visitors come, I suppose, anyway, particularly as the high season. But certainly, uh, well, no, we have need to upgrade uh, the play facilities and I believe this will be 
quite a large adventure park. Good. Uh, obviously, everything has surrounded for boundary fences, and there is uh, in the pipeline. Apparently, there's going to be an upgrading of the foreshore, which is very much needed. Obviously, we had a bad winter. There was a lot of coastal erosion, and, and right. albeit there's a temporary, you know, measure in place at the minute, but. Uh, hopefully in the next couple of years we'll get something which will look more like perhaps like a promenade, something similar to Newcastle. Yeah, that would be yeah. wonderful because I know uh, there's hundreds of families go down there to spend the summer and sometimes you get people saying, well there's nothing really to do for, you know, <coughs> the older children or things like this. Yeah. Um, as you say, as a promenade was there, people could walk up and yeah. down and yeah. maybe some other facilities for teenagers or something like that. Well, yes, uh, but Mourn, uh, while we welcome visitors to all of Mourn, we would like visitors to also remember that Mourn is a working rural area mm -hmm. and that uh, with Cranfield there's always issues with parking and there are local residents there. And we'd ask people when they are visiting to be considerate about them. Mm -hmm. uh, when we go down to the likes of the Bloody Bridge Car Park, which the council installed some new art there over the summer, and up to Carrick Little, where a lot of people go up onto the mountains, up the country lanes. Mm -hmm. So there's large agriculture machines, tractors, slurry tanks, balers, and things like that. And if people would just be a wee bit more considerate, park one side of the road. Yes. So as to allow the people who live there to continue with their lives as well. Hilary, not only is Cranfield for the tourism, but a lot of Kilkeel people and surrounding there always Good. went to Cranfield. That's for true. all the years when I was a toddler, we went to Cranfield. Yes. And now there's a lot much bigger now, I don't know how many thousand car yeah. is at it now, you know, but it was always somewhere to go, peaceful and quiet, and, and that's the way it still is. Yes, and, and probably we want to keep that, you know, we, we don't want to make that. it into a, a, a circus or a yeah, fun fair. Yeah, it, is, yeah. it is for families, it essentially. It is for probably managed, yeah. Yes. But, but you were just saying about the traffic there, you know, the roads around there are pretty narrow and all of that sort of thing, aren't they? Uh, yes. Councillor Quinn. Yes, they are. There had been planned some 45 years ago to do a main road. Uh, this would have enhanced the whole tourist experience of Mowern. We could have allowed you know footpath joining Newcastle and Warren Point, perhaps a cycle lane. Mm -hmm. now, it's great that we can get so many visitors to come into Morn, but when we get them into Morn, we have to look after their safety in that as well. Mm -hmm. So I would like to see maybe in the future uh, consideration given to at least a main artery arterial route to link up the the Newry Belfast yeah, yeah. pathway. That's that's sometime in the future. Yeah, of I course. Suspect, well, not too it? far away. That's the Southern Relief Road. <laughs> yeah. I'm referring to there. Yeah. And uh, obviously that that would be very very important to for tourism and the whole economics of our our entire community because yeah, yeah. uh, Newry is not an easy place to get into. And Absolutely. It, it, it turns off people <laughs> maybe from coming in the morning. You know. Yeah, the, yeah. You know, so hopefully that that will come and there's always they're working on it at this minute in time. Good, good. Uh, well, another project uh, that I believe is coming on board is the upgrading of the Moor and Esplanade, and um, I believe a, a significant grant of over £300,000 has been got from the South East Area European Fisheries Fund, and the council again is going to be putting in over 150000 to that. Uh, what do you think the benefits will be to Kilkeel and to the fishing people down there at Kilkeel? Is it going to be a tourist attraction or is it going to be for... The people of Mourne. That particular fishing fund, I remember going to one of the earlier meetings, and this funding was for three fishing villages, mm -hmm. Kilkeel, Glass, Port of Boogie, and it could, the money could be spent within a seven mile radius of those fishing ports. So right. obviously, and that's how Cranfield can be used in the same funding. Mm -hmm. uh, no, I think it's, uh, it'll be money well spent. Uh, there is the plan for, I suppose, a new fence along the road, new boundary fence uh, in around the football pitch, bring it up to a standard where other leagues can, can play on it, mm -hmm. uh, changing facilities and lighting and generally upgrade the whole thing and that's what we need. Because, you know, there's so, there's so much money maybe spent 30 years ago, but these things don't last forever. Well, that's true. They and do need to be kept. particularly along the shore where you have salt air, anything that's made of steel will rust. So yeah, everything yeah. needs to be upgraded. Yeah. So are you looking forward to that as well? Can yes. And uh, from what I have seen so far of the plants, there's also going to be a sort of a, a, an adult tone zone, some oh, okay. exercise equipment, Good. which our older citizens can use. And it's a chance for them maybe who don't like to go into the gym, to go down there <coughs> during the day right. when things are quiet and have a bit of a workout. 
yeah. maintain their mobility. Well, maybe, it's maybe very important. The councillor should be the first one to get used <laughs> to, get to that. that. <laughs> <laughs> maybe more need of it. Well, I know they have one up in Sleeve Gullion and they've one in Kilbrony Park. So yes, I think the. They absolutely should have won on the Morn Esplanade. <laughs> well, I think the, the ones, as you said, of Sleeve Gullion and Ankle are very well used. Very well used. And it would be nice for the people of Morn to have access as well. And we have this uh, age friendly strategy now uh, coming into place where we are going to be looking after our older people, like myself, you know, who <laughs> um, mm. wants to get out and about and, you know, enjoy themselves really. Well. The problem with that is it's the, it's the older people are now looking after older people. <laughs> <laughs> that's the problem. Well, that's, yeah. that's very true. <laughs> well, I think as, as part of the age strategy, while it is a very good idea, one of the biggest uh, problems facing our older people, particularly down in Morn, which is a mostly rural area, is isolation. Yeah. Uh, there isn't the community transport there that will meet the needs. While there is a community transport organisation, which will look after people with disabilities, help them to socialise. Uh, it's not there for to help them to keep medical appointments and things mm -hmm. like that. So we need to look more at the older people who are now isolated in their own homes. Well, that's, that's very true. Mm -hmm. But you have a good community atmosphere down in Kilkeel, uh, don't you? And yes, we do have a very I good think community. think <laughs> that was no better expressed than what we had seen on Saturday. Brian and I was at the, the session day uh, run by the... Uh, Lower Moor uh, Vintage Club. Yeah. And to be honest with the no better way to express a community. The entire community was in there. Very cross and community. Yeah, yes. and uh -huh. you know, we were speaking to people and they said it's nice to know that we from all no matter what background we come, we can communicate. Yes. Enjoy the day, enjoy the crack. And yeah. that's exactly what happened. Yeah. Uh, I think the <coughs> added bonus that I saw from it from the, the people I was talking to, there was actually quite a few people there from our new super council area. Oh, very good, yeah, yeah. We were all very welcome. Well, well just talking about threshing, I believe the, the new, cor the upgraded corn mill is due for uh, opening, an official opening about the end of October. Uh, have, you been, have you been into it recently? Have <coughs> you seen it? Not since it was upgraded. Mm. Well, from the meetings about it, although we haven't been able to visit yet, because all of the, the technical equipment hasn't been installed mm -hmm. just as fast as we had planned, so uh, there will be interpretive panels, there will also be a, a sort of a computer system to gauge around the corn yes, mill uh -huh. and the morn, which is famous for the granite stone. So all of this stuff will be there for schools and for older people to do a bit of reminiscing. That's true. Now, do you think this is going to be a tourist attraction? We're going to get a lot of footfall into the, into the corn mill? Well, it, it will be because the corn mill is going to give people a very special experience, both looking at the whole uh, agricultural processes from days gone by, but also about the granite. Mm -hmm. Morn is very famous for its stone and the men who worked it. Absolutely. Uh, and what kind of things will there be on show uh, from the granite end well, of things? <coughs> You know, it couldn't be a better place because obviously granite was 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 shipped through and along harbour to Liverpool and places like that right. <coughs> along the way. So I would imagine there'll be the old tools that have been used, mm -hmm. the plugs and feathers, how they split the stones and how they dress the stones. Uh, <coughs> on the thrashing side of things, just I just come to mind that my interest in thrashing is. My family was known as the Treasure McKees, right. because my granddad had two treasures back a long time ago when they were when they had to be used. Today yeah. they're just a novelty, but yeah, yeah. Th these were these were things. It was that working. Was a must. working yeah, yeah. yeah. But I think also with the whole experience of the stone and the corn mill, one of the biggest things and most important things we imported was a lot of the people, the men who worked the stone, who, as Harold said, went to Liverpool and built some iconic buildings over there mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it's allowing people to look back at the success that more and people have had around the world well i mean are we still exporting granite or not are the working granite at all in the, in the way the problem is now so environmental issues are not allowed really to extract much in the way of granite most right. of most of the stones that would be managed and more and so the granite companies would be shipped in from all parts of the world, yes, so which, is Absolutely. which is unfortunate. Absolutely. But yeah. I think also the reason why the, the Moorn stonemasons were able to go abroad, Moorn granite is very hard stone, and they were very skilled people who worked with it. 
that's why they were able to go around the world and work with all other Church of Stones. Mm -hmm. So many of the people from Ireland and Morn who went to America and worked in mm -hmm. the iconic buildings there. So obviously there's, there's men down in Morn who are still working the stone. Still working the stone. You, you, have, you have the, we call them ditches, the dry stones. Yeah. You know, oh, yes. And those uh -huh. have to be managed. And there's, there's men there, if, uh, there's a piece of granite stone sitting there. They would know where to hit that stone with a sledgehammer. Where I would hit that all day to be blue in the <laughs> face. And, yeah. and it wouldn't work. But if you look back to you know in a historical time with the boundary, the water commissioner boundary up over the Moor Mountains, I think it was 26 mile out of a wall, mm -hmm. and like that was all. And I had actually spoken to an older gentleman a good number of years ago, and he talked about his father going to build, and he left home on his bare feet to build that, and and their their, their sandwiches, wooden bread, it was porridge dried mm -hmm. out and mm -hmm. made into bread. And any man who could afford a horse, he got paid that bit extra to. So it was a lot of heavy work, but that craft has went right down to through, through families. Years, yeah. Still, still here today. Yeah. And I mean, even even the stone walls are, are a massive tourist attraction. You yeah. know, when you go down and drive round yeah. Morn, it's just amazing when you look at the stonework yeah. and <coughs> think that they've, it's been there for generations and it's still, as you say, being. Yeah, there's, there's people refer to the Morn that they're so natural. But yeah. it's interesting to note that a number of people who come to the morn to look at the dry stone walls, as you say, mm -hmm. which were not natural, man put them there. They did, and, and, yes. and formed the boundaries. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. But I think also there's a number of families in Morn, because of the revival of the granite, are now working Belfast, Dublin, all over the place. Mm -hmm. uh, people now want it in their kitchens, fireplaces right. built yeah. from granite, yeah. and in some of the new hotels and, and you know, visitor attractions, the granite is being included quite a lot. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, we're going to stay with Anna Long, and um, I believe the, 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 the gates at Anna Long Harbour, there's a, <coughs> an ongoing problem, or is it a recurring problem, or at this point in time we still don't have any resolution on that, do we? We still don't have a, we still don't have a gate on. Uh, the gate was off. Maybe a number of years ago, it lay off for five or six years. It got damaged and storm damage. It was repaired, a lot of money to repair the gate. It mm -hmm. was put on, it lasted maybe a couple of months. Oh. Storm again, the gate's down, the gate's away, and apparently we're waiting for insurance to, to repair that gate. Now, obviously, we have some funding of our own going in to help yeah, yeah. To, to repair that. But uh, it does create a problem for, for our small boats in there. Does that mean that the boats can't get in and out of the harbour? Well, they do, they do, they continue, they do still continue to win, yeah. Well, Anna is still a working harbour, mm -hmm. and there are a number of local families who would keep their boats there year round, but now because of the gate being off, they're no longer covered by insurance. Right, okay. So they have to be very particular about watching the weather, and if there is a rough patch coming, the boats either have to be taken out of the right water the completely water. or taken to another dock that is safer, which yeah. is a, a massive <coughs> inconvenience mm -hmm, mm -hmm. when you have all the equipment uh, associated with the boat stored in Allah. Mm -hmm. And while it is a major problem for the fishermen in Allah, it's also a major problem for us as councillors because we want a resolution to yes. the issue with Harbour Gate. We are fortunate as much as we possibly can. Right, well, I'm sure the people of Anna Long's are quite uh, relieved to hear that. It'll be one of the subjects we will be called out to most. The most meetings that I be at would be held at Anna Long Harbour. Right. If it's not the gate, it's the smell, it's the pontoon. It is now out as well due to no gate on. Right. Uh, the harbour was deepened a number of years ago. It was deepened in such a way that even yachts could come in, and even if the tide was out, the yachts could still float. But because of the sediment back in again, it can't happen. And because of that there, at low tide, warm weather, you get a smell from the harbour, right. you know, mm. and that's, it doesn't go well. Well, it doesn't go well, I suppose, when you have yeah. tourists around and, and for that's the right. general population well, that come along. I think that was the point that Harold touched on, the pontoon is out sitting on the dark side. That means that the harbour is practically unusable for right. tourism craft. Well, hopefully there's, there'll be a resolution in the, in the near future to that particular problem. Well, and I'm sure you <coughs> councillors will be doing as much as you can to... We, we live in hope. <laughs> we live in hope. <laughs> well, uh, Councillor Quinn, you were talking there about the great community spirit there is in, um, in Kilkeel. And I believe there's a proposed new community centre at Kitty's Road and an application has been made to, uh, to flag for funding of... Um, £200,000 and of course the council will be putting in money to that as well. Uh, are you in 
favour of this new community centre and will you be supporting the well, community I am, group? I am. I'm very much in favour. This was sort of forced mooted by my predecessor, Councillor Michael Cole. I was just going to say Kitty's Road was his stopping was ground, his patch. wasn't it? Yes. And uh, I'm glad to continue to support Michael's work because there is a very active community group in there. A lot of cross-community work going on. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a, a group of young women, young mothers, and a few men that are helping out in the background, and they are doing sterling work Good. for the young people. And the wee centre they have, it's only a porta cabin. It was beyond its, its working life Message, a yeah. few years ago, and they're still managing to struggle on with it doing bits of maintenance as and when they can, but it, they are badly in need of this new So channel. when do you see this coming on, on board? When, when do you think it will be started? Are we, is there a hold up in it? Well, or? well, we're almost there with the funding package and I think the planning is approved and all, so it's just waiting on the funders, just getting the ducks into the row. Good. And then we'll be ready to go. Well, Councillor McKay, I know there have been a couple of new community centres. There's been one in Ballinran within the last few years. Are you going to give your support to this Kitty's Road as well? Yes. Uh, why would you not? Like, mm -hmm. it's, it's so important. Like, because a lot of the people there, you would see them walking in, in to Kilkeel to, to get involved in other community organisations. But it's, it's quite a walk, not the safest walk. And particularly, as you said, it's quite a, it's quite a number of people live there. There's a lot of houses out there. And uh, I would certainly give my support to it. Now, the one you mentioned in Ballinran, the Bracken Centre, very, very successful one. It is, yeah. Very successful one. And I think councils generally are going to tighten up on the community centres in the hope that when you get a community centre, you try to make it pay for itself. Yeah, it has to be self-sustaining, doesn't rather, it? Really? Rather yes. than you keep going back to the rate payer to yes, subsidise yes, it. Yes. And that's important. Yeah. Well, I think, as, as Councillor McKee said, and I said, there's a very strong community group behind the Bracken Centre as well, mm -hmm. who, while it was being built, the, the amount of work that they'd done themselves was amazing. Mm -hmm. They attained a, a fantastic centre because of voluntary contribution. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think they should be commended for that. Mm. Well, gentlemen, I think we've covered a lot there from uh, fisheries to threshing to corn mills to tourism. Um, anything else you want to say about the Mourns? Any other problems or any um, anything you think your community would like to know about? Well, I, I know there's a lot of things our community would like to know about. We as councillors are constantly working. But uh, in this day and age, everything is driven by money and resources. Exactly. So we're constantly lobbying and looking for the money to complete. Each councillor would have their own, uh, at the very least, mental list of things that they're working on. So, and as a group in the Moorns Councillors, we do work very closely together. You do indeed. And hopefully, in the future now with the Super Councillor, we will be able to Well, that's what more. I was going to say. When we go into, when we join up with Down, do you think that's going to be a plus for Moorn? Because we're sitting, Moorn's sitting right there in the centre of, of the big Super Council, so... It's not on the outskirts of it anymore, like it is with Newry and Warren. I suppose at the minute I could say, like from Anna Long to Newry, or Anna Long to Warren Point, say that's the people I be hearing from most. But now that's going to change. I'm going to be hearing the other side. So obviously, those issues are going to double. Exactly. <laughs> and hopefully, they're all for the better. But, <laughs> but I think also with the Super Council comes a new set of problems for us as councillors. Mm -hmm. We're then in two different policing areas. We're in two different health board areas, mm -hmm. and. A lot of those things are issues for people, feeling safe in their own homes, mm -hmm. antisocial behaviour, looking after that, but also being able to uh, get proper access to health services when they require it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is something that we're constantly meeting with the different health groupings on a new and more basis at the minute, but yes, looking but forward to now we'll have to build a new set of relationships with the other side of the coin in the... That's, that's very true. And as you say, it's way. going to double your workload, really. Yeah. It's yes. <laughs> Councillors will it will be a full-time <laughs> job. <laughs> yeah, it's, already, it's already been doubled, to be honest with you. Yeah. But one of the good things about council as a councillor, you know, 
people come to you with a problem and it's nice to know that we can set up meetings for them, mm -hmm. let them sit in a room where they can discuss with the officials or whoever, and at least not only the information coming from us mm -hmm. second hand, but they'll hear for they'll themselves. Hear first you know, and hear the issues. But as Brian's right, finance is absolute crisis. I would say you'd love to have the money to do the things, but unfortunately it's not there and I suppose the way austerity measured at the minute is not yes. coming. And I suppose we have to be careful. We're going into the super council mode, and obviously there's going to be a lot more people looking for money. So a bigger, uh, same pot, but probably a wider spread on it. Area. Yeah, yeah, that's very true. Yeah. Well, listen, thank you very much for coming in and, and talking about Mourns um, this morning. Uh, I'm sure the viewers have learned a lot from from you and we've discussed quite a lot so uh, keep up the good work both of you thank you very much Hilda. thank pleasure. you well, well, thank, thank, sorry. thank you i think we're, we're both very proud of the area we come from and we love any opportunity to talk about it well i mean it's 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 one of the most beautiful areas in in northern ireland so i mean why, why not <coughs> blow your own trumpet <laughs> <laughs> well viewers thank you very much for joining us um and as i said thank our two councillors here this morning uh, this morning for um talking about Mourns. Next week I'll be uh, chatting to uh, councillors from Crotleave and we'll find out what's happening in Crotleave. So thank you all very much for joining us. Mm -hmm.